G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Sunday here in Australia and the markets just show no sign of weakness. They just continue to absolutely rip through. Unbelievable. Ethereum is oh so close to breaking its all-time high. So, you know, again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. The upside is going to get hectic for Ethereum from here. Absolutely crazy. I mean, look what Bitcoin did. It has doubled its old all-time high and some. Ethereum hasn't even got there yet. So if it's to sort of follow suit, uh, and again, it'll, you know, chances are because it's an altcoin, it'll probably do it faster uh, and possibly outdo it. Now, there's no guarantees in life. Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. But over seven days, Bitcoin went up 28%, and that's nothing to throw shade at. I'm quite happy with it. But Ethereum has gone up 70%. It has almost two and a half, it's around about two and a half times moving at the rate that Bitcoin has. Not far off from three and a half times. So Ethereum is looking so juicy at the moment. But look, so are a lot of coins. Uh, now, in my personal opinion, this isn't even uh, alt season. It is getting close. BT summon, uh, BTC dominance is starting to drop. I think when we, when we see Bitcoin dominance at around about sort of 60%, getting down to 50%, and look, it could go lower. I don't know. It's just it's hard to tell with uh, you know, the amount of enthusiasm to buy Bitcoin at the moment. So I don't think this is actually alt season. Alts are performing well. This is like early 2017. Everything was just kind of going up together. But it wasn't until Bitcoin dominance really started to drop. Uh, and that was basically, you know, it was slowly but surely dropping the whole way sort of up. But once Bitcoin hit its peak of like 19,400 in late December 2017, altcoins went crazy for about another two or three weeks. I mean, they really just started to go completely mental. We're not quite there yet. We need this Bitcoin dominance to come down. And look, maybe even a correction. I believe a correction is going to come before we really get into the crazy stuff. I think we might have one or two corrections before we get to the full mania end uh, of this bull run. But look, again, that's my personal opinion. It's not financial advice. Uh, I'm not a mystic. I'm not a clairvoyant or a savant. I don't have a, you know, a ball that's telling me you know, exactly when things are going to happen. I can't read the cards as uh, some would do. It's just my personal opinion. But anyway, look at this market cap. You know, 1.1 trillion now. It just, it's you know, we were just over $1 trillion like a matter of days ago. So we've added $129 billion in a matter of days. Gas prices have come down, which is really good. Still not cheap. We don't like that. Uh, ETH dominance continues to rise. That is, I think this is going to rise again. Uh, again, Ethereum hasn't even hit its all-time high. I think once Ethereum hits its all-time high, it really goes on some kind of crazy move and that is when more money is going to start to flow into these um, into these alts. Again, the alts are still going up and some of them are well and truly outperforming Bitcoin. Uh, but my personal opinion is this isn't you know the true alt season uh, again and that's just my personal opinion. All right, so markets are doing well. Now let's have a look. What's been the big movers in the last 24 hours? All right, Maker, really starting to, yeah, make some moves. I bought Maker at about $800. I think it had about three. It didn't really do anything, so I kind of gave up on it. Uh, and yeah, look at these kind of moves. But in saying that, uh, Bitcoin has gone up more uh, in that time uh, from when I bought it. So what you need to remember about altcoins is, yes, they may go up 400%. But they might only do that in a week or two. How much did Bitcoin or some other coin go up up until then? Because if you had Bitcoin go up by 500% in that time, then you just had money kind of wasted. Um, now that's for the traders out there. Simple investors, uh, that doesn't really matter. But really, you want to be invested in the things they're going to do uh, better over the entire term. You know, no point having $100 in something that you've got to wait five years for it to go 500x when other things over that five years has, you know, have gone up seven, 800x. 
So just something to keep in mind. But Bitcoin SV, I don't know where that came from. Uh, IOST really moving, like haven't heard much of IOST for a while. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, again, made a bit of a move. So some really, really good moves here. Bitcoin Gold, that's crazy. Ethereum Classic, mm, yeah, I mean, I suppose. Ren. <sighs> Ren is really starting to pick up for me, so I'm really happy about that. Uh, it, it's not you know, completely outpacing Bitcoin at the moment. It is just a little bit uh, over the last uh, sort of seven days uh, and 24 hours. Uh, it definitely has. But I'm hoping that I pick the bottom for Ren uh, and it's going to perform really, really well. Synthetics Network just continues to do what it's doing. It doesn't stop. Uh, it's been one of my best performers. Uh, Synthetics Network, uh, Cardano and uh Aave, or at least the old Lend token is what I get into. They are my absolute best performers. Nothing's come even close to uh, performing as well. Well, that's not true. Some things have come reasonably close, but not quite. They have well outperformed any other coin. All right, what about losers? Can you actually lose at the moment? Not really. Nano, down 8%, but again, it went up 200%. And I think Nano has gone up like 1,500% over the year. So if you're in Nano 12 months ago, you are absolutely cheering at the moment. Uh, BitTorrent, well, you know, what do you do? Um, BAM Protocol, again, it's, you know, look how much they went up over seven days. So, of course, there's going to be some pullback, but that's the way they go. They pump up crazy, pull back, maybe a little bit of sideways, pump up, uh, uh, and then pull back a little bit. So, you know, no major losers at the moment. All right, so let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Bitcoin. It's pushing up again, like it just, nothing can hold it back at the moment. And some of those profits are moving into altcoins. But again, I don't think this is the real true crazy altcoin. As long as Bitcoin keeps pushing up, really most people are just going to be getting into Bitcoin. The, the unbelievable, ridiculous altcoin sort of stuff is still yet to come. So I'm not saying altcoins aren't a good bet at the moment. They are. But the real crazy stuff, in my personal opinion, not financial advice, hasn't even started yet. Uh, it's going to get even more crazy from here. You know, I keep thinking Bitcoin's going to have a pullback. And look, it does. It definitely does have pullbacks. And I had this one just the other day. All right, so this is back on the 5th uh, to the 3rd of January. It had a 21% pullback. So they happen... But they're gone in the blink of an eye, like, you know, and really n very few people uh, would have been able to take advantage of this. Uh, and it just got bought up. And look, even if you could get it there, uh, you know, you really, you had to be lucky. Uh, and the gains would have really been the same as if you kind of, you know, if you bought back here, you've done better than that anyway. So, yeah, again... I don't trade, I more invest. I look for swing trade opportunities and I look for good projects that I just uh, like what I've heard uh, heard about, read about, uh, you know, done my investigations and things like that. And one that really uh, kind of got my attention was the graph. I really like what the graph's about. So let's go over here and have a look at on CoinMarketCap. Now, it only came out not that long ago and it had this massive spike, made up to like 75 cents or something. And then has really pulled back. And this to me looks like it's uh, found a bottom. So again, I didn't want to get into the parabolic run up because I knew this was going to happen. But this at the moment is looking really, really good. So I got in. Look, could it go lower? Absolutely could go lower. And particularly with the tokenomics, if you've looked into the graph, they do plan to have a number of coins come out over the next uh, sort of six months. So you, you, know, you could kind of say the market will be flooded a little bit. But this is more a long-term uh, hodl for me. I don't, I didn't get into this uh, for sort of quick gains and a swing trade. Although, look, it might still swing trade. Again, this is a low point here. This is a bottoming out when people are kind of given up on, given up on it, and you know, taking their profits. And hopefully, we'll see the next leg up. But again, this is more the long term. Now, the graph. What is the graph? All right, so it's all about data uh, and helping uh, dApps and apps and things that come onto uh, the blockchain. So data at the moment, it's really siloed. So big companies like Facebook own a whole lot of data, Google and you know all, all these other, you know Amazon and all the rest of it, they've got a whole lot of data. 
if you want that data, you've got to go get it from them. They own the data, so there's a price for the data. And you know, there there is, you know, theories out there that they only give out the data that uh, they are happy for you to have. Uh, so it's very centralized data. And so when they're currently building apps, uh, the people who've come up with the graph, they have really gone to try and make it decentralized because apps at the moment, if they're building on Ethereum, they have to go searching for the data and it's really hard to find. Uh, and you know, so you gotta go to individual projects and try and find the data. And then that's only the data from that project. So you gotta go to the other one and the other one and the other one. And they realize that there's a bit of uh, an issue there and it makes it hard to build apps and dApps on Ethereum. So they have gone towards uh, decentralizing um, data. And data's massive, please don't pay it off. Again, data tells you everything you need to know. Data is what will help a business survive uh, and thrive. So to decentralize it and take it out of certain entities' hands and make sure that all the data, all the data out there is available for everyone, I think is going to be massive. And that's what they've done. Again, there's you know some talk about the way they've done the tokenomics. I mean, you know, the, the tokenomics structure that they had to divide it wasn't so bad, but there is uh, a fact that over the next, I think, sort of six months or so, there will be a fair amount of these coins come on uh, to the market and be available. So it could push the price down lower. And look, if it does, I don't mind. This is a long-term hodl. Data is massive. I can't I can't stress enough how big data is. It is the key to everything. That's how Facebook know how to, you know, send you what ads and you know all those other big things. Google and Yahoo and I don't know if a whole lot of people use Yahoo, uh, but anyway, that is, uh, you know, how they know uh, they they keep your data and they know what you're interested in. So they put things uh, out there towards you uh, that they think you're going to be interested in. Data is big, big business, and I think the graph. The graph is going to be uh, a key to decentralized apps. Again, for anyone out there who's you know maybe wants to build something, uh, you know, on the uh, decentralized you know web, which is basically uh, Ethereum at the moment, you're going to need this kind of stuff. It is going to be key to you being able to uh, get the information that you need and not have to pay a million dollars, you know, through you know via Amazon or Facebook or you know Google or anyone like that. They own all that data at the moment and they only give out the data uh, that they're happy to give you and it's for a price. So I think this is gonna be really, really big. And again, there's a number of projects that have got on board uh, with the graph, so Synthetix, Aave, Uniswap, uh, and a number of other projects uh, and they're making it so, you know, it's a smart contract. That's basically what it is. So it's not an individual. It's a smart contract where you can go to get the information that you want to find. Uh, and it's there and available. You just have to have uh, the tokens to actually, you know, sort of get the data and all the rest of it. Um, loving the project. Now, look, you can go over to here. You can have a look at their Twitter. So I'm going to give them a follow. I'm following the graph now. Um, you know, they're live, they're active. This is not some you know, zombie chain and a quick cash, well, it doesn't appear to be a quick cash grab anyway. Uh, the guys that built it uh, were working for a number of other uh, projects and startups and all the rest of it, and they realized that it was extremely hard to get data. And so now, when Ethereum came out, they were really pumped up. There was three of them, they were like, you know, this sounds amazing. So they got onto Ethereum and again, they're helping to you know build stuff on there. And they realized that there was a bottleneck in there that again, to get data, you had to go to each individual sort of thing to get the data, which wasn't the issue, but it wasn't freely there available. You know, again, you had to go all over the place to try and find it. There wasn't a contract, uh, again, that would just bring in the data and make it easier to find. So I'm quite bullish on the graph, but again, it's more long-term. I'm not planning to really make any money from the graph in the next six months, considering their tokenomics, that a lot will be flooded out there. And I may even have to uh, buy some more uh, cheaper at some stage. But long term, data is huge. It always has been uh, and it will continue to be. But we don't want to have to go through centralized entities. And a smart program isn't a centralized entity, it's just a smart program. Uh, that uh, is going to be uh, decentralized and further decentralized in the future. There's going to be a DAO and all sorts of things going on. So again, I won't go into too much of that. You can go and explore it for yourself. 
but I really like what I see. Now look, they're on the GitHub, so all the information's there. You can have a look at their code and all the rest of it. Uh, you know, if if you understand all that kind of stuff, I'm you know anything but a kind of real tech savvy kind of guy. But it's out there. You can have a look at the code, uh, and you know, if again, if that's kind of your thing, and decide whether you think it's uh, sound and all the rest of it. But uh, a number of you know big, uh, again, you know, Ethereum entities are getting onto it, and the plan is that the graph is not going to be just for Ethereum. They are eventually, uh, in the not too distant future, from what I understand, going to look to be uh, cross-chain compatible. Uh, and again, a number of uh, big DApps. Uh, and poor protocols anyway on Ethereum have been teaming up with the graph. Now you can go over here. Now it was recently uh, put out on the NASDAQ uh, and the price soared straight away. And again, we can go back to here uh, and we can see that it had that real big pump up and now it's just kind of bottomed out. And this is usually an accumulation phase. Uh, you know, there was the hype, there was the sell off, a bit more hype, uh, and then the sell off until we get to this sort of capitulation phase. And now, we just bottom out and this has been bottoming out for a while at least that's what it looks like from a technical chart kind of you know perspective and again i'm thinking more long term now what is also uh linked up with the graph is file token now this was much the same as the graph but on even more of a sort of big scale so what we want to do is go max so here we can see i mean this is when it initially came out Boom, it just had this massive spike and then it was just a sell-off and it kind of had that second pump. This is usually the way most markets are. This big sell-off, dump. Another sucker's rally and then dump and then it just kind of gets into this bottoming out. And at the moment, I am hoping that this is a bottoming out period. Oh, my phone's going off there, <laughs> of course. But this looks like a, a bottoming out sort of period. So for me, I'm looking at getting some Filecoin as well. Because again, I think data and storage and all the rest of it, uh, it's massive. And the whole decentralized plan of it and all the rest. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna go and bet the house uh, on Filecoin. Uh, but I think I'm gonna get, uh, get into it, make a position into it. All right, well, that's it from me. Please leave your thoughts down below. What do you think of Filecoin and what do you think of the graph? Are you a big believer that data is going to be huge in the future? Because I am. I really do think that outside of uh, oracles, decentralized finance, uh, things like uh, VeChain uh, and this data, I think they're going to be the big ones. And NFTs, I think they could be big. I'm not so much into digital art myself, but I can see where the market is, particularly in that whole gaming kind of thing and people wanting to have, you know, one off or two limited things and all the rest of it uh, for the gaming world and, you know, VR and all that. I think that's where the real big uh, upsides to uh, supply chain, that's what VeChain is, that was the word I was looking for. I think supply chain is going to be big. Uh, and yes, so the whole gaming space and all the rest of it. So yes, uh, hit that like button down below or tap that like button, whatever you want to call it. Click on that like button. Hit the subscribe button. When you hit the subscribe, go to the little bell icon there. Uh, click on that and so you get all the updates. So again, for me, we'll go back to the graph. This looks like a bottoming out pattern. So this is again when people have kind of gone quiet on it and sort of, you know, half given up. This is when you want to get in, when no one's really sort of talking about it. They were back here, uh, and then again, it had the big sell-off. And again, for me, it's more the long-term play. All right, the graph, I'm bullish on it in the long term, not so much the short term. Stay safe, be kind to one another. You should all be on that gain train at the moment, and I'll see you next time.